I think seminaries have become cynical. I've heard some stories of people coming out of seminary and I've seen I've seen this, you know, where people go off to Christian colleges and they're fired up. And it's almost like the first thing they do when they get to college is they throw a bucket of water on them. I don't believe everything is supernatural. We have to have discernment. We have to test the spirits. There can be explanations for things, but some of the things taught in these schools are just, its none of it's supernatural. I'll be honest with you, I lean skeptical. I wanna come at it from a skeptical point of view. That way, if I'm convinced, then I'm convinced. I always challenge people, if you don't believe, come, come with us sometime when we go out and uh you know explain some of these things that we see you know when somebody's manifesting spiritually because um you know there's a lot of cessationists basically they believe that these supernatural spiritual things don't happen anymore and i think we're surrounded by them if we're going to be christians and fulfill the great commission sooner or later we're going to run into somebody that needs deliverance of some kind doesn't mean they're going to be full on possessed, but uh, the church is full of people that have strongholds, uh, that have oppression, that have uh, some kind of door opened up in their life. You know, I mean, I was that person. I wasn't possessed, but I had all these doors. I was like, no wonder the devil's kicking my butt. I got all these doors open in my life. I kick him out one door, he comes in another door. These extra dimensional beings are interacting with our dimension and they they can run circles around us, okay? That's why we need God's word. That's why we need God's spirit. That's why we need uh, the full armor of God, the authority of Christ, all of these things. Um, because the the enemy that's attacking us is uh, has the ability to put thoughts in our head, has the ability to do a lot of things. But our God has the ability to do a lot more to protect us and help us fight. I don't believe that the enemy wants to show up and attack everybody and give everybody sleep paralysis. His approach is a lot more subtle. He doesn't care how he gets you as long as he gets you. If he gets you to believe there's aliens or if he gets you to be an alcoholic, he doesn't care. He wants you to be ineffective in your ministry if he can. to the Days of Noah podcast, where we talk all things biblical, supernatural, and strange. Luke and I conclude our conversation with Tom Dunn from Through the Black, his channel that you can find on Rumble and YouTube and many other platforms, a video podcast that he does with Vicki Joy Anderson. And they have teamed up now for some time and put out uh, many episodes on just fantastic information for the body of Christ as part of their ministry. And once again, I want to reiterate the four areas that Tom really uh, is focusing on in his ministry with Vicki and his work, uh, Boots on the Ground, is evangelism and SRA awareness and saving babies from abortion. And just that compassion to the lost, especially Satanists, and exposing Satanism that is going on and becoming more mainstream. So in this second half, you guys are going to hear about uh, infiltration into the church, how uh, Satanists and mind control individuals are often programmed personalities to come into ministries, to drain them of resources, to gather intelligence by showing up to a, uh, a ministry um, to get counseling only to gather information on that ministry and report back. And um, these things are going on. So one of the th tactics of the enemy is to, to try to dismiss this mind control and SRA that is happening as a false memory syndrome. Uh, which has no basis whatsoever. Tom unpacks uh, the programming of personalities and how they will summon demons to attach to a personality. And then when you try to deal with them as a deliverance minister, uh, you're actually dealing with a personality, not a demon, one that has been programmed 
to act like a demon. We need to be, as the Bible says, not unaware of the devil's schemes. Uh, Let's be increasing in knowledge and proclaiming uh, truth and hope to those who are lost, to those who are warring against God. As always, guys, please remember to share this episode with family and friends. Give it a five-star review. Leave it a positive review. All of that helps to spread the show to others and help grow the channel to grow awareness on these important issues. So we're just so thankful to have Tom on the show today. Make sure to check out his channel at throughtheblack.com. Take advantage of Russ Dizdar's teaching on the Black Awakening and shatterthedarkness.net. And with that, let's conclude our conversation with Tom Dunn. I made a movie called Detestable about seven years ago, and I wanted to make it just on satanic ritual abuse, but I could not separate the mind control part of it uh, from the satanic ritual abuse because it goes hand in hand. Um, It doesn't mean that every single military person that's practicing MK Ultra or whatever they're calling it these days is a Satanist and vice versa. It doesn't mean all the Satanists are doing these things. But there's a big crossover, okay? And these things are satanic in nature. So, um, and I covered that in the film. I went up to Canada and interviewed a lady called Kim, and she told her story, which involved both. There was satanic ritual abuse and uh, very, um, uh, you know, she found herself in very sterile lab environment being mind controlled as well. So, and then sometimes, um, you know, if the government or the military is tracking somebody that's been ritually abused, they'll say that's a good candidate for mind control. Okay. Because the satanic cult has already done uh, a lot of the legwork for the military. And we've heard this, the same thing with human trafficking. Okay. And, um, and people that have um, uh, sexually abused their children. We've heard these stories where the military say, well, you know, the government will come along and say, hey, we know what you've done to your child. And we will let you off the hook. You just turn them over to us now. I have heard of a lot of overlap with that. Um, I remember there was an interview with Pastor Doug Riggs and L.A. Mazzulli and another individual. And this went along with the lines that Russ Dizdar has been evangeling with. So there's definitely an overlap with individuals that are maybe generational, SRA, DID, they have the specific bloodlines and they're specifically being programmed for certain tasks. And then what L.A. Mazzulli has experienced or researched or came across with is the people with the alien abductions. And it's also dealing with genetics. It's dealing with uh, the sexual uh, organs and um, almost like there's, there's definitely a sinister plan to use uh, people's minds and to, to breed. Um, and it's, I, I, I know I agree with you. It's like, sometimes we get on these ra- rabbit trails. It's like, Lord, do you really want us to go here? But I loved what pastor Doug Riggs had said years ago is like, I didn't ask for this either. You know, he's just, he's echoing what Russ said. He's like, I didn't ask to go down this path. The bottom line is I want people to be free. I want them to be free in Christ and not be addicted. I want them in their whole mind and not split. And in the, as like Jesus's ministry, Jesus probably didn't want to cast out demons, but in the process of ministering to people, he came across broken people that needed healing mentally, spiritually. And so he had to cast them out. So these amazing men that Lord is, uh, has used their experience in their life to uh, to affect people in a positive way um, is truly missed. Uh, I, I'm I'm thankful for the the website, you know, and the research. And I love that you're you you've linked arms with Russ in the past and are continuing his you know um, his training and teaching and ministry. So um, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, I see a lot of similarities, uh, Tom and Luke, to um, so many themes in movies and shows. I mean, 
one of the most recycled themes that we've all seen in in Hollywood and 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 shows that are produced is this idea of humanity being a a virus, a plague, you know, a resetting. We need to wipe it out and restart. You know, chaos needs to come first. Um, I think, Tom, when you were describing the Black Awakening and these soldiers, uh, sleepers lying in wait, is very much like, you know, the first Dark Knight movie, Le- The League of Shadows, a real life League of Shadows. Um, but man, I don't think it's an accident that these themes are played out so many times in movies. It's like, you know, another superhero movie. Well, what's the plot? Well, some, some guy thinks that humanity needs to start over. It's like, it's over and over and over again. Um, but yeah, I, I, I echo, uh, Luke's sentiment that I'm glad that we have people like yourself carrying on the legacy of men like Russ, that we still have um, these trainings and teachings online. And Doug Riggs has his website with all of his stuff, too. From there, um, yeah, what 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 were some of the things that because you mentioned some of your some of the things you dealt with growing up and, and the sleep paralysis. And I know that that's something that Vicki Joy Anderson that you've teamed up with talks quite a bit about and, and dealt with herself, didn't she? Um, and you, and yeah, and you guys uh, teamed up with the through the black. So maybe just kind of walk, walk us through kind of how you started your show and got connected with her. So yeah, um, Vicky Joy. I met her uh, a few years ago. She wrote a book, and I didn't. I didn't even know. I didn't know her at all. Uh, but uh, her book got recommended to me, and I liked it so much that I did it. Uh, I gave it away um, as a promo for one of my films. So everybody that bought one of my films, I bought a hundred copies of her book and gave it away to the first one hundred people. And then I met her in Texas, and. Um, I just uh, slowly got to know her, you know, over the years. And I thought, man, um, this is somebody that I would like to do a broadcast with, but with, but you, I, I just, I wasn't a hundred percent. I didn't know if she would do that. Then I'm going to broadcast somewhere else. I was like, man, I wish I would have asked her first. I had the idea first <laughs> and um, I'm not, yeah, I'm, um, I'm not very good at initiating things. And uh but as we became better friends over the years, I said, hey, what do you think about, you know, doing this show with me? I used to have another co-host back in the day. I've been, I guess we've been doing it, you know, like seven years now. And uh, my first co-host, Jared, he kind of went on to do some other things. He's in seminary now and he's, he had a daughter who's growing up and just, you know, his priorities change. So um, anyway... Uh, Vicky Joy and I, we just, uh, kept trying to do the show and it finally worked out. And, um, it's, it's kind of cool because we have a lot of fun and that's just one thing I want to do is when I'm doing a show is we, we, you know, we joke around a little bit and, uh, we have a similar sense of humor. Um, and it just works. I don't know. It took a while to kind of get it there, but I kind of had a feeling that we would just kind of be able to do the same thing that I, uh, that I had with Jared a few years ago. Right. And, um, uh, we do. And man, Vicky has just an amazing sense of humor. We have so much fun, maybe too much fun, but we talk about dark things, right? Um, and one thing I've been saying lately, this is a safe place to learn about dark things. Now, if you're a Christian living in this world, um, in 2023, uh, 2024, almost right you can go out to the grocery store and you are encountering Satanists. It didn't always used to be that way. But now in the small town that I live in, I see them everywhere. Hmm. Okay. So what do these people believe and how do we approach these guys? And how, how do we respond to this, um, this main lining of Satanism? Okay. Um, we see these people out there, um, so we're just kind of sharing, okay, this is what these people believe. And we're trying to explain there are different denominations of Satanism. It's, it's kind of confusing. Um, the Satanists, honestly, they don't even know what they believe. If you ask them, they just know that they want to rebel against their grandma. So, um, but we teach people like, what is chaos magic? What is witchcraft? What is sigil magic? Okay. Um, and, uh, we've been doing that. We'll, we'll um, oh, 
what about ghost? What about, um, you know, all of these other things, sleep paralysis, the church, um, doesn't have answers. Pastors do not have answers for these things and they come to us. Uh, it, it makes us so frustrated because I cannot tell you how many times by the time people get to us, they said, well, I went to my pastor and my pastor said, you need a psychiatrist or a Catholic priest. Right. And I'm like, what? This is crazy, dude. We, we have God's word. We have all this information. We have the example of Christ. We have, um, all of these things. And somebody comes to you and says, Hey, I think uh, I saw a UFO or an alien or something. And, uh, the pastor tells them that they need a psychiatrist. Um, this is not the way that, um, we're supposed to deal with these things. Okay. Um, our whole belief system is based on supernatural events. Okay. The raising of the dead, walking on water. Okay. Just miracles from, uh, and power encounters from, from Genesis to Revelation, right? So, uh, but it, all of a sudden these things don't happen anymore. Um, you know, when the Bible was done being written, well, that was the end of that. No, we, we live in a world where the supernatural tries to interact with us. And, uh, you know, the, I'm talking about demonic attack in some way, and it could be deception. It could be attack. It could be oppression. Um, people that open themselves up all the way can become possessed. Okay. So in the United States, um, the churches that are on the ground in the U S have missionaries in other countries. And those missionaries know this stuff. Those missionaries run into these things. Uh, I don't know why, uh, Americans are so, um, clueless to the, you know, to these things, um, because our media and, uh, Hollywood makes millions of dollars on these things. They I love think, it. I think that's just it, Tom, because, uh, we've talked about this, you know, um, I've become friends with, uh, Rod Smith at the millennial mustard seed. Um, I think uh, he interviewed you a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, and we've talked about this cause his wife is, I think, uh, Filipino and it's like, she doesn't understand why in the U S we, you know, think it's entertainment to talk about ghost stories. It's like, they live that stuff. And I'm wondering, we've talked about it, Luke, that you're right, Tom, everything is so fictionalized that, that I think, and this, this goes to something we talk about before we uh, started airing this morning, we have created a culture that when, we are conditioned now that when we see supernatural, when we see fantastical, our brains immediately put it in the fiction category. And I think that is a plan of the enemy to do that. So yes, it is more real and interacting in other countries, but here as the kind of the, you know, so goes America, so goes the world kind of, we, we set the tone right for the culture of the world uh, by and large, it's, oh, that's, that stuff's for comic books. That stuff's for Marvel movies. That stuff's for, you know, for kooks and fringe. And I was going to ask you too, like, what do you, th what do you think is the, what is, what is behind our seminaries and our pastors not being taught this stuff? I think part of it, in my opinion, is, you know, the age of enlightenment in the 1800s and so on, as we, as we, as we, removed the supernatural things from the Bible, or at least what we teach pastors and how we train them. We're trying to, we're trying to take Christianity and put it into this safe little bubble that we can go, this is a hard fact. This is practical. This is real. We don't know about all this weird stuff, almost like we're trying to save face, but we end up gutting our Bible. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, and we can talk about that um, in light of all the wokeness, right? It's like, yeah. what, what, what is happening with all this stuff? Uh, I think seminaries have become cynical, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, I, I've heard some stories of people coming out of seminary, and I've seen, I've seen this, you know, uh, where people go off to Christian colleges and they're fired up. And it's almost like the first thing they do when they get to college is they throw a bucket of water on them, you know? <sighs> And, um, uh, man, uh, I just remember, uh, watching kids, you know, um, 
that I would work with. I, the, the last job I had, I worked in an eyeglass lab and these kids would come, they get a summer job, 18 years old, and they were all excited, you know, living for the Lord. And then I would see them by the end of the semester, they would come back to work again. And it was like, they, t- they would share all this stuff that they've learned. Okay. Yeah. And, um, uh, I believe, I don't believe everything is supernatural. Okay. Um, and I, I believe that we have to have discernment. We have to test the spirits. Um, there can be explanations for things, but, um, some of the things taught in these schools are just, it's none of it's supernatural. Okay. Now I'll be honest with you. I lean skeptical. Okay. Um, we're trained to trust, but verify if somebody comes to me and gives me a, um, uh, tells me about a case or a story or a testimony, then, um, I try to research it out. I try to put the pieces together. Uh, sometimes I can almost finish their sentences, but I, I want to, I want to come at it from a skeptical point of view. That way, if I'm convinced, then I'm convinced, you know what I'm saying? It's more likely to really be true. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I don't believe every single story out there is, but, um, the church, uh, and, and I think, I think this is very true for what's happening, like with the wokeism that they are, um, how do I say this? Um, they want to be nicer than Jesus was. Okay. Uh, (laughs) in the, um, in the gospel and they are afraid, um, of, uh, they think that we have to have all of this compassion that's not there in scripture in the way that they're demonstrating it. Tom, it's, it's interesting though, but it's, it's like, they're so tolerant of everyone that, cause they don't want to offend, you know, I agree with you, but when it comes to the subject of Christ and Christ's standards, that's where they have, it's like they're tolerant to everything except for Christians. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I, I always challenge people, if you don't believe, come come with us sometime when we go out and, uh, you know, explain some of these things that we see, you know, when somebody's manifesting spiritually. Because, um, you know, there's a lot of cessationalists, you know, um, cessationist saying that word wrong. Basically, they believe that these supernatural spiritual things don't happen anymore. And I think we're surrounded by them, you know. Um, but it's nothing I, – I guess the other end is, you know, one one extreme is it's not real. The other end is everything is supernatural or spiritual, which is not a, a healthy place to be either. So we call that – what do we call that? Um, hyper um, Hyper discernment. Okay. Every single thing is demonic. I don't believe that either. Um, I, you know, I'm not naive to what the enemy is doing and he's definitely, you know, trying to trick us and set us up and, um, he's, you know, uh, running amok, you know, in this world that we live in. Uh, but I don't believe every single thing connected to the world is going to cause you to be demon possessed. If that makes any sense, I'm just trying to generalize this here. Yeah. And I think, and I think that, and this is my personal opinion, like there's, there's those two sayings, right? The cliches, uh, you know, you're, you're so spiritually minded, you're no earthly good. Or the other one, you're looking for the devil behind every rock. Um, I, I agree. I think that both of those could be, um, could be errors and are errors for some people. I will Mm -hmm. say in my opinion, however, that it's probably the opposite is more likely. So if I could put it into an an analogy, it's like, yes, there's times where the seatbelt wearing the seatbelt in the car, you know, caused your death during the accident. That's the exception. I think more likely is we see most people not understanding uh, the supernatural and how God is at work, like the cessationism that you mentioned. And we're often m- more concerned about earthly things when we should be more concerned about spiritual things, I think. Well, you know, I don't know if I can explain it this way, but we are three-dimensional beings, okay? Imagine if we tried to interact with a two- two-dimensional being, okay, that was uh, uh, some kind of, um, you know, person that was drawn like a stick figure on a piece of paper. If we tried to interact with that person, 
they would be like, what is happening right now? This is really bizarre. Okay. So we would be extra dimensional, you know, trying to uh, communicate with that person. If we were able to put our hands through the paper, they wouldn't see our three dimensional hand that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they would only exactly. be able to perceive it in two dimensions. So what about something that's extra dimensional from us? Okay. Whether it's uh, demonic or whether it's angelic, you know, the Bible says we entertain angels unawares. Um, so, uh, or, you know, God getting involved. Okay. Um, I, I'm not, um, f- for me personally, I'm not a charismatic or Pentecostal guy. Uh, I don't think all that, um, stuff is, you know, um, not relevant, but when God, when, when God shows up in the form of miracles, it's like, what, we don't understand this. How did this happen? Okay. And then when, when the demonic show up in the form of manifestation, it's like really weird to us, you know, or it could be, you know, in some kind of a paranormal thing. All right. Um, where, you know, we hear about the ghosts. Okay. We don't believe in ghosts, but we believe in demons, you know, things happening in the house, whether it's a apparition or books flying across the room or some kind of a weird manifestation. Um, these extra dimensional beings are interacting with our dimension and they, they can run circles around us. Okay. That's why we need God's word. That's why we need God's spirit. That's why we need uh, the full armor of God, the authority of Christ, all of these things. Um, because the the enemy that's attacking us is uh, has the ability to put thoughts in our head, has the ability to do a lot of things. But our God has the ability to do a lot more and to protect us and help us fight. Um, so I don't believe that the enemy wants to show up and attack everybody and give everybody sleep paralysis. Um, his, I mean, his approach is a lot more subtle. Okay. And he, he doesn't care how he gets you as long as he gets you, if he gets you to believe there's aliens or if he gets you to be an alcoholic, he doesn't care. He don't care. He just wants to get you. He wants you to be ineffective in your ministry if he can. Yeah. There's, there's a few things I want to touch on before we, that we've already talked about that. I want to, uh, kind of wrap up a little bit before we move on. Um, one thing is um, in in one of your episodes with uh, of Through the Black with Vicky, um, you were talking about how there was this publicity over this like forty some year old book about Satanism that nobody re- really remembers, and you guys were scratching your head, kind of going, "Why would they bring this up and bring people's awareness of this situation?" And um. One of one of the things I think that we kind of just touched on as far as the fictionalizing of the supernatural in the Western world, I'm wondering if that's almost the plan there with that book is so that when someone hears about Satanism and SRA and all this stuff, they they bring this book up so that the general public goes, oh, I know what that is. And they dismiss it out of hand. You know, it's fascinating that we've seen really in the last five years, we see the other side bringing up the subject. Okay. Now we're bringing it up. We're trying to bring people's attention to it, but we're, we're small. We don't have any money. We don't have any power. Okay. All I have is a podcast, you know, Russ, he reached around the world, but his ability was very limited. So I don't know what the threat is to why, they would want to go back and 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 discredit that source, uh, except for um, it looks to me like they have a vested interest in de- covering something up and hiding it. Okay, now you're talking. What you're talking about is the book Michelle remembers, and they recently made a movie called Satan Wants You. Okay, and it's like a docudrama. It looks like so. Um, I can't rule out that. Money is a factor as well because people like these subjects. I don't know how much it would cost to make a movie like that versus what you, how much money you could make on it. But I, I agree with you, Pete, um, that they, um, you know, it, it's about it, it's about discrediting it and fictionalizing these things. And um, it's somebody. I guess I would have to say a director or a producer has a bone to pick for whatever reason, but we're seeing groups like the satanic temple, which is a very politicized group. That's not really Satanist according to their own belief system. 
they don't even believe the devil is real, but they're using it as a tool, the the iconography or the image of Satan as a tool to kind of troll the church. Like just this last week, they assembled a statue in Iowa, I think it was. Yeah, I saw that. And uh, just to mock Christians, you know, during, you know, the celebration of the birth of Christ, somebody actually went in there and knocked the head off the thing, which I thought was pretty cool. <laughs> so, um, yeah, well, I can't disagree with that. Yeah. So, anyway, um, th- there's this group out there, but they started within the Satanic Temple. There is a part of it, a ministry, if you will, called the Gray Faction. And the Gray Faction, their number one goal, their only goal, is to discredit all Satanic ritual abuse and the Satanic panic. Why? Why? They don't even believe in the devil. Why? And they don't even believe in these other type of Satanists. Why are you defending a whole group of Satanists that you don't even believe in? It doesn't make any sense. Tom, isn't that whole, the whole false memory thing? Isn't that? Yes. Th- that's all about discrediting. Yes. And that, I mean, the false memory syndrome uh, is was never even established as a syndrome. They called it that, but it never went through all of the um, uh, of the checks and balances to get it established as a syndrome, okay? And there was even a group out of Philly, I think, called the False Memory Syndrome Foundation, which there uh, was a lot of shadiness there. The founders of it. Um, were accused by their daughter of uh, incest or abuse in some way, and they're saying she has false memories. So there, there's obviously a, a motivation there to say, okay, we got to find a way to cover this up for sure. Um, so, so going back a bit to kind of the um, the unpreparedness that pastors are given in seminaries, Russ mentioned about uh, the infiltration of church politics, and military primarily. What would you, what would you have to say on that as far as maybe what the seminaries are, are not teaching on purpose or some of that infiltration that Russ taught on? So, um, well, we can see some of this stuff out in the open. For example, there is, um, there are churches that are connected to a, a group that are prepared to tell their congregations, hey, you need to fall in line with this government program, okay? Like an example, we've seen this with uh, COVID in the last few years, right? Where they're saying, hey, guys, you need to put the mask on, you need to wear the shot, right? And they had some kind of credible, quote unquote, uh, church leader, you know, say these things. So the idea that we could have infiltrators in seminaries or in churches, absolutely. We've heard this over and over. The, when we meet somebody um, uh, or we hear a testimony from somebody that was SRA, satanic, uh, uh, satanic ritually abused, almost all the time they went to church. They went to some Christian church, okay? And uh, churches are a cover. It's a cover for them. Uh, people, when people think of Satanist, I think they think of these, um, these kids that dress in black and, uh, have their hair dyed black and wear, you know, satanic jewelry and go to heavy metal concerts. But when I think of Satanist, I think of, um, leave it to beaver. I think of the Brady bunch. Okay. Cause these, uh, that's what they look like. What does a Satanist look like? Um, they don't, you know, those are more of the political, fashionable Satanists, what we call experimenters, but the Luciferians, okay, um, they wear a three-piece suit, okay, they show up on TV, uh, they could be a celebrity, they could be a politician, they could be a banker, they could be, you know, a lawyer, any of these things, right? Think of the movie, uh, The Devil's Advocate, um, not recommending that movie, but um, as an example, so... um Definitely, you know, we have infiltrators and um, the the more, um, you know, the more powerful a church is, the, the bigger target they could be because we can see people that want to go in there and try to make the pastor fall. We've heard of this over and over. You know, uh, if you watch my film Detestable, uh, there was a story. Let me, let me tell this story real quick. Yeah. Uh, in that movie. There was a lady and her husband that got out of uh, college and uh, wanted to be pastors. So they went down to this town in Ohio and uh, 
began pastoring this church, what they didn't know is the whole town was run by Satanists. And the church began just standing up against some crazy things that were happening in the community, you know, uh, pornography and, and uh, drug trafficking and things like this. Well, the Satanists didn't like it, so they tried to take this pastor in this church out, and they sent in an infiltrator, which happened to be the chief of police wife, and she tried to get close to the um, the pastor, tried to get close to the pastor's wife, and because the church was so in tune with God, uh, it began to break down her programming, and she began to confess the truth about why she was sent in there. We've heard this a lot, right? Um, but that's just another example. But churches that are not aware of these things, um, they're vulnerable to this, right? And uh, many, many churches have, have fallen because of these things, okay? And they'll send in somebody to try to have an affair with the pastor. Tom, I, I want to ask you this, because uh, my church... My church here uh, in Hammond um, has got a long history of, of deliverance ministry. And, uh, you know, I'm proud to say, you know, because um, it's, it's a rare, rare thing to have uh, across the churches, especially here in America. But I, I wonder if you could speak to the difference of ministry of deliverance where you're casting out spirits versus when you're dealing with somebody that's got split split personality from what i understand you just can't go being an aggressive and think you're just casting something out because you're dealing with different parts of a human spirit that's divided and you mentioned the individual that was aware that they were going to a uh, ritual but that wasn't the their whole personality and there was demons it sounded like there was demons attached to the the satanic part of them that wanted to go to temple so yeah that's very very complex and um so we understand when we read the bible we see individuals that were possessed okay somewhere in their life they open up a door to the devil okay we can look in the uh, where Jesus encounters the guy and he's in change in the cemetery. He falls down. What do you want with me, son of the most high God? And uh, Jesus casted the spirit out into pigs. So, and we see other examples of deliverance. Think of uh, Acts chapter 16. I think Paul was being um, stalked by this girl with a python spirit. And he finally turned around and cast the demon out. So we understand the idea of singletons, okay? That's what we would call a singleton. You, We all have one personality, okay? Somebody that's been traumatized and <clears throat> they can, um, from what we uh, understand, they can split those personalities, okay? So satanic ritual abuse is traumatizing abuse, okay? Whether it's sexual abuse or physical abuse in the setting of a satanic ritual, okay? People wearing robes, people doing chants, people drinking blood. So that's traumatizing, right? If you see that, if somebody abuses you, it splits your personality. It shatters like a piece of glass or a mirror, okay? And then um, it's almost like a defense mechanism that our um, uh, you know, psyche has built into it to protect us from you know, uh, just losing our mind or dying, I think. So uh, our personality will split and these programmers have – the understanding of how to program raw personality. Okay. And they can, they, they will do a ritual, summon a demon and attach it to a personality. Okay. So this is what we've seen. Um, if you're doing a deliverance on a singleton, uh, it's just you, the person and the demon. Okay. So uh, through the authority of Christ, we command the demon to come out. It's a little bit of a fight, but it has to come out. Okay. And, um, you know, the person is set free. Uh, if you are um, dealing with somebody that has uh, MPD, multiple personality disorder, it's now called DID, dissociative identity disorder, then you can be dealing with a different personality. And I think a lot of people that do deliverance don't understand this distinction because you cannot cast out a personality, okay? You're only going to make that personality afraid if you start screaming at it. Um, and it's not going to do any good. And if you're, if you're in a situation like that and you, th you it seems like it's not having any, any effect, you could be dealing with a personality. Now, on top of that, to make it more complex, 
certain personalities can be demonized. Okay. This is what we've seen. So you just kind of have to ask God to guide you, you know, give you discernment, show you what's going on. We've heard stories where people have, um, been trying to cast out a demon and they can't get anywhere and the demon's too powerful. The demon's too powerful and Russ will show up and he will test the spirits. And he said, this is not a demon. This is a personality. You've been trying to cast out a personality and it's been programmed to act like a demon. Okay. And yeah, so it's complex and man, who who wants to deal with this? This is crazy. But the reason why we do it is because of compassion. We want to see people set free. And uh, these people are out there, they're suffering, and there's nobody to help them. Uh, and, uh, you know, the psychiatrist method is uh, medication. Um, so, or a psych ward, right? A straight jacket. We believe that God can set these people free and heal them. I remember a story of Pastor Doug Riggs when he was ministering to one of his uh, individuals in his congregation. And he he was realizing he wasn't getting anywhere. And he came across, a, a, it was a, psycho, a, a psychology book, I think it was, dealing with split personality. And he began to read a section of that book to this individual in this counseling session. And for the first time that he experienced, the individual split and identified themselves as a new individual, Sally, let's say. And he's like, well, I haven't met you. I was like, why have you not talked to me? He's like, well, we didn't think you would believe us. <laughs> so it was like he was, he through compassion, through his prayer and discernment and research and f- f- realizing he can't be aggressive as a someone that's trying to do deliverance, trying to understand the whole picture this individual ended up coming forth and he could start bringing the healings. So I think it, it's remarkable that the church hasn't grasped this yet. Um, it, it's still on the fringe. I mean, I mentioned deliverance ministry. Even that is very rare in a, in churches. And then you get even a s- smaller sect that even understand the this dissociated identity disorder, which I think Russ said he was estimating there could be hundreds, maybe in 150 million individuals that are are split like this. So there's a huge need for people to be compassionate, to be evangelists, do the work of the evangelists, to share the gospel, and you're going to come across these individuals that are that are hurting and need help. Well, that's just it. If we're going to be Christians and fulfill the Great Commission, sooner or later we're going to run into somebody that needs deliverance of some kind. doesn't mean they're going to be full-on possessed, but uh, the church is full of people that have strongholds, uh, that have oppression, that have uh, some kind of door opened up in their life. You know, I mean, I was that person. I wasn't possessed, but I had all these doors. I was like, no wonder the devil's kicking my butt. I got all these doors open in my life. You know, I keep uh, I kick him out one door, he comes in another door. You've you've mentioned too about um, some of these programmed individuals uh, getting in touch with deliverance ministers, trying to get counseling, but they're doing recon. They're they're spying. They're uh, how, how does that work? Well, um, yeah, and I've seen this where they will uh, a programmed uh, individual. We'll see a ministry, maybe a ministry online, and they'll get into a chat. You know, they'll get into a chat room, or they'll seek help, or they'll they'll try to um, to waste the time of the ministry, so the ministry can't focus on you know these uh, these other needs. We've seen this over and over. Um, they will try to waste the time and resources and bring confusion. You know, or just what I was saying just a few minutes ago, you know, try to get the pastor to fall, try to do anything to bring disruption to God's ministry in any way that they can. Um, You know, they, uh, uh, Russ has talked about how they try to get some kind of position in the church. You know, if they can just get uh, a janitor position, they can get the keys, come in in the middle of the night and do a ritual in the church to uh, dirty the air. 
Okay. And then you show up on Sunday morning, you don't know what's going on, but uh, the a demonic presence has been inv- invited into your church. Now, if you knew that, you could pray against it and you could cast it out. But if you don't know, then um, uh, there's been a door opened up, you know, and you're unaware of it. And you're, I mean, it's, it just got next level real quick. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and that kind of segues a little bit back to what we were talking about with the sleepers in uh, the Black Awakening coming. These these Satanists that have that uh, you and Russ and others have talked to, saying, "Yeah, we're planning this, and uh, we're coming after you, Christians, and we're going to bring chaos." Do you think that they believe? I mean, I, I would have to understand that they are familiar with the Bible. And what we believe, do they believe they can, they can beat us? They can beat God. I think, yeah, I think they're crazy enough to believe that. Okay. Um, just, I mean, think about how many times a devil has been beaten. He keeps coming back. Like he's crazy enough to believe he can actually beat God. Um, and he's gets his butt kicked every single time, but he's not mentally stable. Okay. Right. As far as, <laughs> fallen angels go. So, um, and and we see this, right? Uh, he, his goal. And when we look at, um, uh, prophecy and scripture is to, he wants to become like the most high. He wants to be called God. Okay. So, uh, that's, that's the ultimate goal. Um, but yeah, I, I think they do. And, um, Man, if you just watch, uh, one thing I've been watching the last couple of weeks is uh, I got I kind of got on this kick where I'm watching all of these interviews with uh, these like police interrogations with these people. Uh, just I don't know if I want to call them normal people, but not necessarily part of what we're talking about today. Just kids that have killed their parents, right? Mm. They just, you know, a guy strangled his mom and another guy, you know, a girl killed her parents or something like that. One girl stabbed her mom to death and um, she was actually a multiple and she, they interrogated her and they could not get her to confess. She's like, I don't know who you're talking about. I'm not that person. I'm not that person. And um, so who knows what the whole story is on that, but there is, um, there is a movement out there and it's a minority, but people that just don't value life and they're okay with killing people. And, um, it, it's crazy. And we, we live in a culture that where, uh, human sacrifice has been mainlined. We just passed a, um, we just passed a, an amendment to the constitution of Ohio where it's okay to kill your baby through all nine months of pregnancy up until the moment of birth. That's human sacrifice. Yes. Okay. So, um, People don't value human life. Go ahead. Tom, when you were uh, speaking on uh, children there in Ohio in the Constitution, I, I know listening to your podcast, uh, you've got a movement that you're you're pushing on saving the babies. Do you mind uh, kind of unpacking that a little bit more? Uh, tell us, you know, what are you guys pushing for um, from the people that are, are following that movement? I know some other states have passed some laws or amendments. I'm not sure the specifics on it. In Ohio, it was an amendment to the Constitution. Michigan did. Um, and I think we're the, actually the eighth state to pass something like this. They're coming after 11 states in 2024 where they have plans to try to make this uh, happen. Okay. And Luke, let me just jump in real quick. Luke, I don't know if you heard about this, but I just saw in the newspaper front page a week or two ago. Uh, that in Wisconsin here, a uh, judge overturned, I think, the 1849 abortion ban. So now it's open back up in Wisconsin. Um, Tom, are you? F- I didn't want to interrupt too much, but go go ahead and I want to ask you if you're familiar with uh, Jonathan Kahn and some of his stuff along those lines. Yeah, I'm familiar with Jonathan Kahn. I, I don't I don't follow everything he says, but I've seen I've seen some of his books and some of his interviews. Um. So, but yeah, anyway, th- I mean, this is happening right now. You know, Satanism has been mainlined. You know, we've been talking about Satanists. They actually have their own abortion clinic in New Mexico where it's uh, like a tele, you know, medicine thing. You can call up and get prescribed um, abortion medication. Okay. Wow. And the the Satanists, you know, are very well funded and they're very proud of this. And they're teaching people, hey, this is covered 
excuse me, under freedom of religion, you can do a ritual, an abortion ritual, and it means abortion is legal. Okay. So uh, that's what they're doing in New Mexico. They're trying to do it anywhere that they can. Uh, they love the murder of children. They love the defilement of children. And we're seeing this, you know, um, through abortion, baby murder, uh, you know, and even mutilation of children through just the uh, everything that's happening with the trans movement. OK, yeah. Um, so, I mean, and uh, yeah, what, what you just mentioned in Wisconsin, we're hearing things. Um, uh, we had a, a great victory last year with the overturning of Roe, but we had nothing but defeat since then, it seems like. Wow. Yeah, the reason I brought up Jonathan Kahn um, is to uh, to plug his latest book, The Josiah Manifesto. Um, and it's just amazing how God has revealed things in his word that are replaying uh, in in a modern times. You know, right from, you know, his first bestseller, The Harbinger, you know, whatever, 15, 20 years ago, about 9-11. And connecting that to uh, Isaiah nine ten, where where Israel was being chastised by God for their you know, unrepentant, hardened heart, and instead of uh, repenting in humility, they say, you know, our our bricks have fallen. We will rebuild with hewn stone. Our our uh, sycamores have fallen. Uh, we will plant cedars in their place. Um, and literally the next day after the Twin Tower attack, you know, um, however that happened, right? There's lots of lots of good rabbit trails. You can go down there. But the fact is it happened and people died. The Senate Majority Leader, Tom Daschle, quoted Isaiah 910, thinking that he was thinking that he was giving America um, a pick up yourself by your bootstraps kind of we can make it, we can overcome. And he's pronouncing judgment on America. That was a verse of judgment. And so I, I bring up Jonathan Kahn because in jo the Josiah Manifesto, I can't even tell you the dozens of things that line up to Hebrew holy days and different events in history that have replayed as far as the, you know, the 50 year year of Jubilee and all of these things with abortion coming to America legalized in New York in 1970 that led to Roe v. Wade and COVID. They are connected. The, the plague of COVID and the deaths that happen are connected and actually was a judgment on that same generation that league that brought abortion to America. So highly recommend um, that book. But uh, boy, this has been awesome, Tom. Um, you know, I, I mentioned to you earlier as I was trying to get a feel for kind of some of the ways that you minister the, the, the ways that you talk um, in your show with Vicki. And I mentioned, it seemed like there's four things primarily that, that you are, are plugging and working towards evangelism, rescuing babies, uh, SRA awareness and counseling through continuing Russ's legacy and fighting against Satanism. So maybe just with the, you know, 10, 20 minutes we have left here, uh, maybe talk about, yeah, some of those um, ways that you're continuing Russ's legacy, what you're doing with Vicky on your show, you know, a story or two about um, about the impact that you've had with God's help, uh, helping others, anything you want to share along those lines. So, yeah, um, uh, we, we say... Um, through the black spiritual warfare and stuff is one of our taglines, right? Uh, we want to, we want to equip people. We want to see people, um, trained up and, uh, strengthened in their faith, uh, and have answers. Okay. For the things that they're seeing. Um, uh, I mean, people are growing up in church. Okay. And, uh, well, becoming adults and not, not even having a clue how to answer any of these things. Okay. Or, or uh, and it doesn't even have to be um, supernatural or spiritual warfare stuff, but not even really knowing the basics of the gospel. So um, uh, I think it's all connected. Uh, I'm excited. I just read God's word and I get excited about it. I'm like, man, this is so cool. This is so amazing. Um, you read in Isaiah chapter nine, 
um, prophesied, you know, hundreds of years before the birth of the Christ child. And he's going to be wonderful counselor, prince of peace. Okay. And it's just like uh, the Satanist in um, up in Iowa, they're mocking that. I'm like, have you ever really read this? Have you really seen this? Do you know what this means? This is incredible. You obviously don't know the truth and the God that you're mocking. Um, uh, if you knew the truth about him and how much he loved you and how awesome he was and how, you know, um, I'm bored. I am so bored with Satanist. Okay. I feel sorry for him. I, I just, I, I think they're a joke and I don't mean that as an insult. Okay. And I, I don't say that on my high horse or out of arrogance or anything, but I just really feel sorry for them because probably they're not mocking God, just something that they, that's happened in their life, right? Uh, they were rubbed the wrong way by a Christian or they don't, you know, uh, it's always, you know, a lot of times it has to do with sex. Well, I, you know, I don't like the rules about sex and, you know, so um, we, we just want to reach as many people as we can and get them excited about God's word, Bible study. Um, listening to Russ, you know, has really done that for me. And it's really just um, helped me to look at God's word in a different way. I can't read it the same way anymore, the way that I used to. It used to be a chore. Now it's a privilege, right? So um, we believe all the answers are in there. And uh, we try to teach and train, um, you know, uh, scripture in context. Um, we're not like, I, we're not perfect at it. And um, we get a lot of things wrong. But um, I believe that we can have victory. Jesus didn't die on the cross so we could barely make it through life and barely make it across the finish line. His shed blood gives us powerful victory over the enemy. Okay. So, so we can have victory so we can run across that finish line so we can win in life. Okay. Um, I, I believe it. And uh, of course uh, we don't win every single day of the year, but God, um, God stands to, uh, uh, to help us, to strengthen us, to watch over us, to, you know, um, the battle belongs to the Lord. Uh, I stand on God's word and uh, just uh, just believe everything he has for us and asking, Lord, give me everything you want us, you want me to have. Um, a lot of people are like, hey, you're doing a great job. You're doing a good job. Um, you know, uh, glad you're out there. Hey, we're in this together. I'm not out here alone. We're We're in this together. And uh, we need other people to get involved. I, I'm not saying do what I do. Um, you got to be called to do this. But um, we're challenging people to step up this year and really get out of their comfort zone and say, hey, you know, we need to be bold. We need to be bolder and have those, you know, kind of confrontational situations in a way. That's why we started this campaign, No More Dead Babies. And we're giving away hundreds of free shirts. So uh, we, we've talked about that a minute ago, and I kind of want to make sure we, we mention that. If you go to that website, nomoredeadbabies.com, and there's a link off of throughtheblack.com, you can order a free shirt. We're asking you to help us out with shipping. If you pay for the shirt, we'll send it to you. But um, we don't only just want people to order a shirt and wear a shirt. We want you to pray. Say, Lord, use me to save a baby. Use me to share the gospel. Okay. And, and intercessory prayer, we're really going to be focusing on that, um, the, at the beginning of, uh, 2024, really, and pushing that and, uh, and just trying to provide some kind of school of prayer to teach people how to pray, how to intercede, standing in the gap and just, you know, crying out to God and saying, Lord, I believe we can have less abortion now, even though there's an amendment in Ohio. Uh, because we're praying, we're asking you to intervene, we're asking you to save babies, and we're asking you to use us to save babies, okay? If the church gets involved, then um, we can see amazing things happen. God's not intimidated by the Constitution of the, of the state of Ohio. He's bigger than that. And, uh, and in Him, we are more powerful through His Spirit, through His Word, okay? Us walking that out. So... Um, I um I mean that that's just what we want to do. Like I said, I was a punching bag for the devil, then I learned to fight back and um we're in a war anyway, so why not learn to fight instead of getting beat up all the time, okay? Um and uh, we I mean we we push evangelism and we want to we want to share 
you know, Christ with anybody. We want to f- fulfill the Great Commission and then um, uh, just equip people, right, with uh, the information. I don't like talking about this stuff, but you see it. So we need to have an answer. Like I said, no matter where you go, we're seeing Satanists emerge, people that are calling themselves Satanists. And these are hurting people. We want to reach them, okay? And if they're doing rituals against us, then we want to pray against it, okay? We want to protect ourselves. Uh, You know, we hear Christians say, well, the devil can't touch me. I'm covered by the blood. Well, he seems to be kicking a lot of butt right now, okay? Um, And I, I think that's kind of the wrong attitude to have. Look at Look what Jesus said to Peter. He said, Simon, Simon, Satan is asked to sift you as wheat. Okay. So um, the enemy has the ability to affect our lives. Okay. And God, he can't do anything that God doesn't allow. All right. But it's for our betterment. It's for our strength. Okay. It's for our improvement. So uh, we got to learn from our mistakes and learn from the attacks and learn how to fight. Uh, and then help others. We are in a world, in a culture of people that are hurting, that are broken. They're practically begging us to tell them about Jesus. Okay. And we just got to get good at it. I tell people, become a soul winner, become a soul winner, find out how to, you know, just, uh, just share Jesus. And, um, uh, I don't, I don't know what that takes for you. I don't know how God can use you. Can you, you know, just pray for your family at least, you know, believing God can save them. I'll tell you, I want to say this, and this kind of brings it all around. Uh, recently, my son, who's just been living wild for years and years and years, came home about six months ago. And we have prayed for him and we've reached out to him and loved him for years. He was gone actually for 11 years. From the time he turned 18 till the time he turned 29, he came home back in July and he's not been the same since. He said, Dad, he's like, I don't want to live that life anymore. I, um, you know, I'm, I'm leaving that behind, leaving that behind. And I've been watching God work in his life. And I was sharing with you before the show, he's just recently started taking Russ's, um, courses. And he's, he told me last night, he's like, man, I've been listening to these and I don't want to stop listening to them. I like them so much. So, um, go after your prodigals. Don't give up. And I know people get discouraged, but I just say that, um, just to give people encouragement. Okay. Um, I would pray and I, I would tell the Lord, I don't see anything happening, but I know you're working. I know you're working and I know you can't force my son to do the right thing, but you're there convicting him, protecting him. And I mean, he has some crazy, crazy stories, but, um, God is good and God is still working in his life. So, um, um, I, I, I don't know what's going to, you know, I don't know how God's going to use him, but there, I mean, there's other amazing things that are happening, you know, behind the scenes. So, uh, I mentioned that though, uh, in, uh, talking, uh, you know, about evangelism, let's, let's save our own, you know, family. Let's get them saved. Let's reach out, right. you know, to whoever, who's the person in your life right now that you think is least likely to get saved. Start praying for that person believing, you know, um, Russ used to teach, uh, faith is stepping out into a uh, vast nothingness and landing on a rock. And I just believe when I step out into nothing, I'm going to land on a rock. Lord, I don't see it. I don't see anything out here, but I'm stepping because I know you got me. And I know, I know that you are working even though I can't see it. And, uh, what, I'm going to mess this up, but it, what, was it a soldier where Jesus said, man, verily, I've not seen any faith. That's right. Like I've seen this guy right here. I want to be that guy. Yeah. I want to, I want to be, I want to be that church, you know, where God says, man, I've not seen faith. Like I've seen in this church, I've not seen faith. Like I've seen in this dude right here. Okay. Or whatever the situation is, you know, and it's not a competition, but I just, um, you know, uh, without faith is impossible to please God. So, um, I I just, I just want to encourage everybody. Yeah. Oh, I love it. And, you know, I was just talking to a friend this last couple of weeks and he brought up about that scene in Indiana Jones in the last crusade <laughs> where he just puts that leg out there on the ledge and there is a rock right mm, underneath him that he, yeah, yeah. he doesn't know it's there, but it is there. And that is, that is God. And we need to, we need to step out according to his leading and 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 be faithful. So thank you for that encouragement. Absolutely. 
Um, and thank you for, for you and, and, and Vicky's work with through the black, if you want to plug, um, yeah, what you guys are, are, I, I know you mentioned what you're up to a bit, but, uh, where people can find you, um, how they can get in touch, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, through the black.com is the website. We put out a show recently. It's been on a weekly basis. We do one show. The plan is in the month of January, we're going to do about four weeks of a lot of content because I got to take a break, uh, after that. And I want to put out a lot of content at the beginning of the year. Okay. So I have, besides Vicky, I have Colleen and I have pastor Sean who help us out. And, uh, we also do a show called audio topsy where we do presuppositional analysis on music and uh, Kenny C joins us. So uh, I ha- I'm surrounded by amazing people, people behind the scenes um, that volunteer and just do uh, uh, amazing stuff. But through the black.com, that's the website where you can find all the stuff. There's free, all of Russ's teaching is up there. And we just share that because it's just helped us all out so much. Russ was such a good teacher. And, um, uh, when I took his course confronting the powers, it was a game changer Hmm. that was that, you know, um, back in, um, 1988, that was a game changer. I turned my life over to God. And then when I took the courses, you know, um, that Russ gave me, he he used to charge for the courses, you know, like a hundred dollars, 125 bucks. Now, you know, then he put them all out for free because that used to be how he made his money in the beginning. Yeah. So anyway, those courses are free on our website and they're game changers. Okay. You, if you take those courses, uh, confronting the powers, theocentric counseling, um, what's the other one? Black awakening, Uh, freedom encounters. What's going to happen is you're going to have confidence like you've never had before. You're going to have an understanding of how to answer the questions. Okay. So, and you don't have to know everything about everything, but you're taught in the courses, um, uh, a way to respond to all the things that you maybe don't know, but you have a biblical worldview at that point, right? And a systematic theology. So um, you're going to have confidence and you're going to be able probably to help people better than your pastor and nothing against your pastor. I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of generalizing. There's a lot of great pastors yes. out there. Um, but when you take that theocentric counseling course, um, the first thing that happened is, is I help myself and then I begin to help people in my family. Um, so I highly recommend those things. Yeah. Through the black.com is a website. I made a couple movies detestable. If you, we've been talking about satanic ritual abuse. So, um, that movie is kind of like, um, a, uh, an introduction to that. And you can see some stuff in there. Testimony of Greg Reed and some other people and, um, uh, and, um, Kim up in Canada. So, um, that I've uh, that was my first film, and that's the most popular one that we made. And Russ is in that film too, by the oh, way. Nice. So yeah. yeah. So all that stuff is there. Uh, we just uh, we appreciate people hanging out with us in the chat when we go live, and all that stuff. That sounds great, Tom. Can you uh, uh, unpack a little bit more uh, on the music thing um, subject that you uh, are, are you are dissecting lyrics? Yeah, and the spirit behind so, it and stuff. Or yeah, what we do is um, we cover, like we pick a song out, a popular song, or maybe sometimes it's not a very popular song, and we kind of uh, analyze it and try to figure out what was this person trying to say, okay? Um, Lately, we've been doing like a lot of stuff from the 70s, whether we cover Black Sabbath or David Bowie or something like that, and we'll listen to a little bit of the song, and then we'll listen to... Um, you know, the lyrics, analyze the lyrics. What does it mean? Um, it could be, you know, we, we have all kinds of different, you know, uh, songs that we analyze. Uh, we want to use that as a tool for evangelism. Do you use, uh, look at music videos as well? Analyze yeah, that. yeah. We have some where we, uh, where we, uh, looked at the videos as well. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So. That, that, very cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I just want to, um, kind of piggyback on you talking about the courses, uh, Tom, what a wealth of information and that it's free. And sometimes we, we forget, you know, if it doesn't have a price tag, sometimes our mind goes, uh, it's not really that valuable, but yeah, I just want to encourage, like Tom said, everybody to take advantage of these things. I mean, in my own mind, I just can't imagine a more 
uh, well spent life than if I didn't have to go to a, you know, a regular job during the day. I could just devote and, and just learn from these courses and then put it into practice because there's so many good teachers out there. So everybody listening, you know, uh, if you don't have earbuds or something, if you, you know, use your cell phone, just put these things on while you're doing the dishes, while you're getting ready in the bathroom in the morning. Um, you be faithful in those small things. You know, I'm speaking to myself too, because yes, I would love to have my entire day open every day to, to do this kind of stuff, but I need to take advantage if, if God has given me those slivers of time, I need to use those well. Um, and then, and then trust and believe that he's going to put me in charge of more like, like the parable says. So thank you so much, Tom, for your time. This has been great. Hey, thank you guys so much for having me on and so glad we could get it worked out today. Um, just God bless you guys and everything that you're doing and, uh, can't wait to hear, you know, uh, more from you and what's happening. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if there's any way we can, uh, support and partner with, uh, with you and Vicky, we'd be, we'd be happy to do that. One of the, the funnest things I think about this, this podcast journey, now uh almost 60 episodes in i think when probably when this one airs it'll be in the 60s for the episodes but it's just the the amazing connections uh of of fellow believers and and just rich experience and knowledge in different areas so it's 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 great to meet you and uh and god bless you and vicky god bless you guys